Hey everybody, I've got to tell you about a crazy, wild experience that I've had this past week. And I can't show you anything tangible right now because I'm under a strict non-disclosure agreement, but I can definitely tell you about the experience, which was extraordinary. <laughs> so how do I even set this up? Uh, I guess from the start, which wasn't even that long ago. Basically over the weekend, I was contacted out of the blue by somebody I had never heard of before working from an agency that I had never heard of before, but that has actually produced some some stuff for television that I, I actually have enjoyed. But yeah, I had to look them up. You know, I never heard of them before. Anyway, they're, they were saying, hey, we've got this project that we're working on. We need somebody to build a Lego thing. Uh, but we can't really tell you about what that thing is or even what it's for until you sign this non-disclosure agreement. They you know, forwarded along a form for me to fill out. It's, five pages long. I actually read through the thing as well just to make sure. I'm, I'm, I'm that guy that actually reads legal agreements for stuff, but you know, I, I personally have done very, very few commissions uh, just in general that are, that are hobby related ever, and I haven't done anything in a while. I just, for various reasons, it, it hasn't been something that I've, I've felt good about getting into. And I now realize I should probably change that a little bit. But I wrote back and said, yeah, okay, it sounds, sounds interesting. Like my, my curiosity was piqued, you know. It wouldn't, wouldn't cost anything to, to find out more. I just needed to sign the form and send it back to them digitally. So no problem. And by email exchanges, uh, we agreed to have an initial phone call you know, to, to talk about it, to introduce me to the project and see if, you know, kind of gauge interest and fit. Uh, on Monday, this just past Monday, the, uh, in the afternoon. Sounded good. And before the call even happened, they actually were able to forward to me a little presentation that just had some information, some more specific information about the project. And I looked at it and I'm like, oh, this, this actually could be a good fit for me. It sounds, sounds like fun. So got on the call and there's a bunch of people on the call from you know, like project management to creative people and folks I didn't even know what their, their roles were. But you know, they gave me the introduction and, and I started out right from the beginning saying, hey, I, I looked at the, the brief so I basically know, you know the, the, the overall gist of what we're getting at. So if everybody's okay with this, let's fast forward, not waste each other's time. Let's get into specifics of exactly what you want and then also what the schedule would be. This is the point where a lot of people are like, oh yeah, you were like, ah, well, how much money is it going to be? How much am I going to get from this? That was the last, literally the last thing that was on my mind. It was literally the last thing that was discussed on the call. I wanted to know what the project was, what they expect, what they would have expected from me were I to accept this mission and and by when you know what how much would this basically impact my life and take away from my ability to keep doing what I do which is you know creating videos for y'all like the one that you're looking at right now except not like this but you know more valuable anyway uh, yeah, so they gave me the brief, they gave me more specifics, and it sounded great. It's definitely a type of thing that I would want to do, you know, a type of thing that I would want to build. So I, I, felt, I felt good about that. I felt good about what it was going to be for, what the, the intellectual property was that it was to be based upon. And then we got to schedule. When would this need to be done? Remember I said this was on Monday afternoon that we were having this call, this introductory call, this first call. Yes, the, uh, the due date was to be uh, Wednesday, the same week, this same week. So two days later. And I said, ha ha, end of day, like end of, end of, end of, end of day, Wednesday, maybe. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. We, we, reluctantly they can make that work. Still a ridiculous timeline. Normally things like this, at, the, at a minimum, if they, were at a, if they were being rushed, it would be like a two-week process to go through it. I mean, the thing, I can, I can tell you this much, the thing that I was to build was essentially targeting a size, so just you can have some idea of what, you know, what, what the scope of this would, would be, is to build a Lego mock, also design it from scratch, come up with the idea for it, design it, and build it 
fully owned by me, you know, as far as its direction. Something that would basically fit into a, a one-foot cube. You know, something about, about yay big, you know, just, just in general. That's kind of the, the general size of it. It would fit within that. It ended up being, it ended up not fitting quite into that cube, but it was, it was close to that. So that kind of gives you a general idea. Sizable, you know, and it did need to have detail and it did need to have the ability to, to really impact uh, visually. It was something that was going to be filmed on like Hollywood grade cameras, you know, good quality stuff, not for just a YouTube video or, or you know, a little Twitter GIF or something like that. It needed to be high enough quality to, to pass muster for critics, you know, who, who weren't just from, from the Lego world. Anyway, needed to be done in two days. And technically, I guess you could call it two and a half because I negotiated up to get it to end of day Wednesday, which is absolutely ridiculous, unheard of, un called for <laughs> almost uh, but I I took the challenge I, I accepted uh, I, I thought that if I put everything else aside and they they recognized everybody there recognized that it was ridiculous the the timeline was ridiculous to do something creative so they knew that they were not going to get a Mona Lisa out of this you know they, were, they knew that they were not going to get my best work or anything like that and everybody was was very clear on that these these are not new folks to creative processes and everything. So we're good. And, you know, I've, I've worked in marketing uh, organizations myself and also product development. Like we spoke similar language. We knew what, we all knew what we were getting each other into. And with all that said, I accepted. By the time Wednesday came around though, the due date or due time had been moved forward a bit. So I needed to have it done and delivered to a courier who was going to go who was going to come pick it up from me directly by midday by noon on wednesday so that took another half a day away from the project also i needed to record some video footage from myself to later show to all of you because there's there's a component where i'm actually able to to share once the the non-disclosure period ends and the you know the the thing that this is for gets filmed and produced and it's ready to be published i can actually sh then show you you know stuff i wanted to be able to 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 show you what i had done and talk about it lego fan to lego fan you know so i was able to record some of that i needed to do that i tried to get some stuff in my studio as well so i can do a, a normal kind of reveal you know item reveal video for you guys and I, there needed to be some additional footage as well for a secondary kind of offshoot project, support project to the main one. So there was a lot of stuff that needed to be done. Plus, I forgot to tell you about this part, another parameter of the project. It was going to be transported internationally to another country to be filmed. So it needed to be durable. They asked for me to glue it. That is not a strange request. Everybody goes, you know, all the Lego fans go, oh, not the craggle. Yeah, the craggle. It's something that's very important. I've, I've glued stuff that I've done for other uh, companies in the, in the past. It's, it's standard fare, but there, it does take a long time. It takes a, quite a bit of time to glue something properly if you're not gluing it as you go. You know, typically things that, that get glued are like the major sculptures that are just made from, from bricks. You know, you put down a layer of bricks and then put down some, some solvent and put the bricks on top of that. You know, it, it's just something that, that occurs as, as they go after the design work is already done and they're just assembling based on basically instructions at that point to actually create something in three dimensions from scratch, designing it first and then building it in scratch and then to go back and have to glue it, not, not easy and uh, not sensible. There's a lot of risk if you try to glue something too quickly and then you end up with you know runs or if you try to go the fastest route, you use just pure acetone to, to do as your solvent, then there's a risk of clouding occurring where you know, you'll actually get a, a, a little bit of, of surface deformation. You'll get some, some white over the, the edges that looks terrible. And then you, you can clean that up, but still there was so much risk. So I ended up only gluing on the final pro product. I ended up only gluing a handful of small things that were kind of at the highest risk of being broken off. But for the most part, what I built was designed tough 
I was able to, to grab this thing and shake it like this, grab it from one side, grab it from another side, grab it from underneath, turn it upside down, shake it around. Like, it's tough. It's tougher than built full Lego sets. Things are interlocked together. You know, anything that had length to it, I put pins all the way through, bars or, or whatever. So it had its own durability based, in, based on it. And then I added in myself based on what I knew and what I knew I did not know, what I knew that they did not know about how this thing was going to be, be actually filmed and used as, I can call it a, a prop, you know, like a set prop. Uh, I added in additional scope to the project saying, what I should try to do if I can, if I get enough time, is build a stand also for this that will allow it to be posed. You know, the idea would be that normally it would just be sat somewhere and it needed to have enough visual impact where it was to be seen and to be recognized for what it, for what it is. We don't know exactly, did not know and still don't know exactly how it's going to be filmed. Is it going to be a close pan? Is it going to be far away? I, I, I did know that it's not going to be in a brightly lit location, so that helped to, to inform the color scheme that I would be using. Some other things also factored into that, but I wanted to give them the power to pose this from, from different angles, uh, no matter where it was being posed or where it was being placed. If it was being placed on a flat surface, you know, down low, if it was being placed on a surface up higher, wherever the camera angle was, to be able to rotate this thing to its most camera friendly and reasonable and sensible angle to, you know, to, to make the most sense and to, to get the most out of it for them to get their most, you know, their, their, the most bang they could out of the work that I had done. So I also built a stand, which is something that I, I don't have experience with and I actually had to do some different things, pulled off some, uh, some ideas from some old Bionicle stuff that I had done before, some things that are not that, that common in how they're done, but made actually a pretty decent stand for it in the end. So that was, an, that was another project. It also needed to be easy to remove from the stand and to place on the stand by people who know nothing about Lego. So there were so many things that were involved in this. I didn't sleep. I, I think I did take a nap over the course of those two days, but otherwise I, I didn't sleep. Uh, my first full night's sleep was Wednesday night, you know, after that, after all that was done. And just hours before the recording of this video here today on Thursday, I got another email about some other new details that have emerged regarding scheduling and also what's going to be done with the offshoot of the project. There's some more stuff that I need to contribute to that that fortunately I already captured, I already filmed before as additional extra credit. So there's just so much work and it was so much potential stress, but fortunately, you know what, I actually really, really enjoyed it and shockingly I'm really happy with the the end uh, the end product that that I ended up with like it's it's something that I wish I could have kept it's definitely something that I will be once I'm once I'm able to will be able or will be happy to show you guys will be proud to be able to show off I even did interior details I put Easter eggs inside of the thing I just put together a custom minifigure or a cup actually a couple of custom minifigures inside that will probably never be seen but you know they have some some extra value for you know like for the crew like the crew will uh, folks that are that are doing the, the filming will be able to appreciate if they see it and there's a way to 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 get into the interior of the thing without taking it apart and without there being any risk of it of it you know breaking during that that process and everything so yeah, I did a commission. I did a thing, and uh, the schedule was crazy. It was very wearing, but uh, I, I I proved to myself that I was able to do this, and I was I was happy about that. So I can't tell you any specifics. I can't show you any specifics. I'm not even going to tease anything, you know, like a color or a single two by two brick or anything like that. I'm just gonna you know. Be patient about it. The timeline for actually producing this thing, the work that's going to be done now uh, over in another country and then back here as well, is going to be very fast. So it's not going to be too long. It's not going to be like next year. It's, it's going to be this year that you'll be able to see the, the finished project, product and project that it's going into and I will be able to show you all the stuff that, 
that I did for it. And hopefully the footage that I took in the studio and elsewhere will be useful. But I just wanted to share that experience. It was really crazy and I've never done anything quite like it. I've been in some crazy uh, you know, time crunch situations in, in, in work in the past in my career and uh, nothing like this, nothing to this degree ever. I've done single overnighters for work before. I've not done multiple overnighters back to back, including working the entire, the entire time. So I look forward to being able to show you something, but at least now you know why I haven't done any videos for the past uh, few days, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to get back pretty soon. There's a little bit more that I do have to do now for this, this project, but not, not too much. And during that time, uh, or at least at the end of that time, uh, after, after all was done and I needed to recuperate a little bit, and also a little bit during, during the time when, I, I, you know, it's when you're under this much pressure, depending upon the individual, you may have to do certain things to keep your mind going properly. So for me, I, need to, you know, I, I do know how to determine when I need to take a break, when I need to like a resting break, which is, which is relatively rare for me. I'm pretty good at continuing going as long as I'm eating and drinking properly as needed. But uh, mental breaks are, are really important. And one of the things that I do for, for a mental break is get in and do some gaming with, with some friends. And during the, the gaming process that we did, which is on, uh, including on some types of games that I haven't played in a long time, uh, I got a bunch of creative inspiration for stuff that you're going to see on this channel in the future. I'm not going to focus on that right now. I will, I will share those ideas in a separate video once I have some more, I, some more specifics uh, to, to put together on that. But shockingly, out of all of this, out of all of this focus on doing this one foot cube custom new thing, I got what I think is a great idea that's going to be exciting. It's going to entertain myself within the Lego hobby and also entertain a lot more of you with stuff that is, is completely unlike anything that you've seen on this channel before. But I think that will be uh, well received and that will fit in very well. It will become ultimately a, an integral part of this channel and this channel's identity and uh, an extension on the, the whole New Jang City thing, just better and more fun especially. That's all I got for you for now. At least it's it's something you you know you know what I've been up to, and I'll keep you posted. Thanks for watching. Talk to you again as soon as I can.